हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल In this video I will be dealing with a case of small pupil there is some pseudo exfoliation and I am going to implant a lucid historic which is extended depth of focus IL so this is a 65 year old patient who has got a bilateral pseudo exfoliation and you can see that the pupil is not dilating well so the plan is to use the BHEX pupil expansion device the anterior chamber is little bit on shallower side while making the main incision make sure that you have adequate length into the cornea so as to avoid any iris prolapse you don't want a premature entry the viscoelastic used here is hyalucote which is a heavy dispersive viscoelastic and i'm going to use bhex pupil expansion device and usually in this uh, cases what i do is that from the main incision once the BHEX pupil device is inserted I insert the flange on right and left side and then the sub incisional flange I tuck it under the iris this is my method and uh, I do it this way because I don't want the trailing haptic of the IOL to dislodge the BHEX while inserting the IOL but uh, I think a simpler method is to have two side incisions and then tucking it with from the side incision on both sides so it is easier now I am going to use the Inamura Capsurexis forceps so I have recently started using this I feel we get a bit better control on the Capsurexis sizing and centration with the forceps and uh, I am just uh, going along the pupillary margin here and this is the important part the sub incisional part where we should be carefully holding the flap because if you don't hold it carefully it might extend there very important to do a good hydro dissection you can see that hydro dissection wave very nicely done there and uh, don't push suddenly lot of fluid in case of small pupil otherwise the iris will prolapse so good nucleus rotation after hydro dissection and then second in these cases the most important thing is the first crack so I am going to do a primary chop here using the longitudinal FECO energy in pulses it goes in and then I am going to make the first chop there it's very important to divide this nucleus till the posterior plate and uh, that is very important so you can see that every chop I am making I am making sure that I separate the pieces till the posterior plate this makes the next steps very easy if these pieces are stuck together even by tiny fibers quadrant removal becomes a bit tedious process but once the pieces are free from each other quadrant removal is very very easy you just need to feed the FECO tip with these pieces I am going to use only the torsional FECO energy here and uh, of course the IP which is intelligent FECO which means when there is occlusion the there will be delivery of longitudinal pulses this avoids any occlusion of the tip particularly when you are using the torsional FECO energy I am using the balance tip with Centurion FECO machine here and with the IOP maintained at 46 millimeters of mercury which is equivalent to roughly 60 centimeters of bottle height as we come near the end the last pieces I always make sure that I keep a watch on the posterior capsule fluctuations if there are any I reduce the vacuum else I just go ahead with the same settings here the uh, heavy dispersive OVD which is with hyalucote here helps in uh, maintaining the endothelial safety now during cortex removal it is important in small pupil cases to track each part of the bag there to make sure that the cortex is out so mentally make a note from which areas you have taken out the cortex completely and which areas there might be some cortex which is left or stuck 
you can also move the b hex ring around using the Sinsky to check the periphery like this and uh, it's important to take out most of the cortical fibers the sub initial ones I usually use low vacuum first and then uh, drag out this cortex and then aspirate using bimanual is also a good idea uh, so it depends on your habit so I am used to the coaxial eye since the beginning but if you are used to bimanual eye you can use that important thing is to maintain the anterior chamber while you are doing this cortex aspiration the small cortical fibers which are on the posterior capsule can be easily hydropolished so just push the jet of fluid directed towards these cortical fibers now during hydropolish make sure that you don't inject suddenly into the sulcus because that may give rise to fluid misdirection a bit this is the Lucidis eye oil which comes in a water bath it's a hydrophilic eye oil with hydrophobic surface a modified surface and uh, its haptics are like the uh, bigger uh, haptics just like it looks like a plate haptic but uh, with uh, bigger holes in between and uh, here I, as you can see I push this uh, injector right inside the eye which generally I don't do but here I want to make sure that the trailing haptic is directly delivered into the bag rather than in the anterior chamber so that I don't drag the B hex ring along with that now uh, the method I employ for removing the B hex is uh, like this so first I make sure that the eye oil is properly in place along the axis I have used 1% hyaluronate which is cohesive viscoelastic agent for insertion of the eye oil so it just comes out in bulk I just have to go to the posterior part behind the eye oil there and just aspirate a bit and uh, entirely that this cohesive viscoelastic comes out quite easily and once the viscoelastic from the bag is out I nudge the eye oil right properly according to the axis here I am using the callisto markerless system and I align these marks along these uh, callisto marks which are seen on the screen and once that is done what I do I inject one person halonate just in the anterior chamber and then I remove the BHEX so some surgeons uh, prefer doing BHEX explantation under the hydro uh, for tori guiles but I prefer this method using the cohesive one person halonate to remove the BHEX and then this remaining anterior chamber one person halonate can be easily removed within just few seconds without causing any change in the position of the eye oil in the bag so we get very accurate post operative results you can see that uh, there is a central area of higher power in this eye oil of around 1 millimeter and followed by peripheral reduced power area for the distance so this eye works very well in these patients so these were the few tips which I would like to share in case of small pupil and lucidicide. Thank you.